So the winter 2023 symposium, so it was just in January or something. Um, and uh, at this conference, there were really two speakers. One was the president, uh, Walter Kim, of the National Association of Evangelicals, and also uh, Jessica, who's a scientist um, in uh, geology. Oh. Um, and so she's also vice president of science and policy at the Evangelical, evangelical Environmental uh, Network. Um, the title says uh, Evangelical Word Map. So, but these are words that, and sentences that came out in the conference that sort of stood out for me. Um, and in the spirit of sharing, I would like, I'm going to point out some of them, but, but I want all of, you, all of you to feel comfortable to just share stories or other what thoughts come to mind when you see this. So, for example, um, uh, scientists don't feel safe in the church. This actually, uh, I actually know a few people. So I know um, one woman and her family who, um, during the whole COVID masking stuff, um, uh, at church it became very uh, uncomfortable because she wanted to wear a mask and the congregation that she was part of didn't want to wear a mask and it became a very complicated thing during Sunday school, talking to her children and stuff like that and so she left. Um, so there's there's stories like like that. There's uh, stories of a closet scientist. So I know another guy who's in a French uh, gospel church, but nobody knows that he's a scientist because he's too scared about it. Um, there's the idea of uh, uh, the youth need to choose between science or faith, it's like an X or you know you, you can't do both. It's one or the other. Um, you know, can you be a Christian and believe in evolution, for example? Uh, any thoughts that come to your mind on this? What is evolution? Uh, people who attend the church. Yeah, maybe just skepticism sometimes. The scientist, can they really believe in a sense of I don't know how to say that. Um, everything that's being said, or really what the scripture is teaching, just that little thing of like, oh, are you really in? If you're a skeptical scientist, maybe what a big prejudice. I don't know. So, uh, on the last point on can you really be a Christian and believe in evolution, that reminded me of the conversation that I had with one of my professors and also with my church. Um, because like, at church, uh, we had an event that allowed us to discuss about science and faith. And as a scientist myself, I'm, I was really happy to be part of that conversation. And I shared a story with my church or that group who attended about what, have, what my professor told me. Uh, he is uh, he's a professor here in McGill, and he's from the Department of Human Genetics. And one day he just walked into the lab and told us about how and told us about he does not think evolution is right and he wanted to prove it scientifically, how it is not right. And it was, it, it generated a really interesting discussion within our lab just because like, we have learned about evolution since we were like, in high school and now this professor is telling us that like, he's challenging Darwin like really openly about it. And I brought this story and told it to my church and they were also surprised to see that there are atheist scientists who are doubting um, the accuracy of evolution. So I wasn't trying to claim whether evolution is like real or not, but I'm just saying that there are non-Christians who are saying that evolution could be wrong too. So what is the point of us trying to make sense? I mean, what are we actually trying to bring out when we are saying, when we are discussing evolution uh, and genesis? I heard a kind of a to this short. I was traveling in business in, in Hong Kong and I went to an expat church there where they were speaking English. And the 
with the minister on that particular Sunday, the, the sermon basically was was to prove that uh, that it basically was young earth creation uh, and so on. And, but, but what really annoyed me about it was they had a, they had a skit by the young people in the church, and the, in the skit. They basically would say, oh, those professors, uh, they're all so stupid, you know, and, and to me, it, it really bothered me <laughs> to hear that kind of an assessment, but, uh, interesting. Right, the, the, the whole, the, 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 the whole tension goes both ways, so I had a student who found out that I was a Christian, and uh, he was very disappointed, and so... Um, so kind of, he stopped interacting with me after that once he found out. So it was kind of sad. Mm-hmm. It was a sad, sad, sad. He didn't know the type of Christian you were? Just, just the idea. <laughs> just, just the idea. He didn't know what type I was. He just, just the fact that that was. So okay, so he was, he was non Christian. Yeah, yes. No. Okay. Yes. For the second uh, last point. Climate change is not real. Uh, uh, I've actually never heard about this spoken, at least not from people in my church, but I know it's very mainstream somehow in states. Yeah, we, we, we actually had a speaker um, in CSA, who was, uh, was during COVID, so it was on Zoom at the time, and, and um, it was about this woman's church who uh, did not believe in. Um, climate change, and but there were floods in that area, and so she started wanting to search about whether this was real or not. And so it was kind of about her, her uh, journey uh, and kind of discovering whether it's true or whether it's not true. She's kind of journey, journey through that. All right, cool. So um, another thing that that kind of came up is uh, Sir Francis Bacon's quote. Um, and it, so I, here I wrote science as view, but this is from a Christian science view, right? So it's not a non-Christian science view, but as a Christian who's a scientist, this is a science as view. So he, so Sir Francis Bacon said, God in fact wrote uh, two books, not just one. Of course, we are all familiar with the first book he, he wrote, namely Scripture. He has also written a second book called uh, Creation. Uh, this might not be too controversial, but the corollary is is that if God wrote these two books, then they can inform the other. Okay, so if God actually created the universe, then there's God's information there. Right? And they can actually inform one another. So how do you feel about this idea? Does it make you uncomfortable, comfortable, you don't think it's true? Of course there's the supremacy of scripture, but but you know, um, is that scripture too? Right? So yes. Oh I'm very happy somebody brought up over me. You know, which I totally agree. Yeah, I see God's creation in nature. Yes. How many how my face was hammered. Uh, for me, is that I can see not only from the book, but in the world. world. So this is a safe space to disagree. We are that we're not coming here to sort of make any conclusions. I'm just sort of raising this issue to have conversation, exposure. Uh, a, a trivial thought. Uh, I'm sure the creation came before scripture. I thought, I thought it was true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> but it's not the bottom of the book. So, um. But it's just that the Bible also says that, right? That creation speaks. Yeah, creation speaks. I thought how would you disagree slightly and you can all judge me, but because, <laughs> because I was, you know, I was a trained physicist for a while, and then I met the Lord and, you know, discovered the scripture, I might not pursue for truth, I didn't need Jesus. 
you know, and I observe many things, right? And so for my, maybe my experience as a believer, it's, that's a beautiful book, but it doesn't mean that it's a way to know God, right? So, sure. it's not enough. Sure. I, 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 I would even say that that's why Jesus came. Maybe the God came. Because it's not enough. Otherwise, he didn't have to come. But it would have been enough. But, so, but, um, but, but I, I think, I think that what's, what's controversial here is can science help us interpret the scripture? That's really what this is saying. And can scripture interpret signs that it's a two-way street. I think that's, that's the core of what I'm asking. This is a scripture that was brought up at the conference um, and that um, science is actually a witness witness to the world. And so I want to point out the, the green and the yellow, but, but really I'll, I'll, I'll read the whole thing. So, and, and God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding beyond measure and breadth of mind like the sand of the seashore, so that Solomon's wisdom surpassed the wisdom of all the people of the East and all the wisdom of Egypt. Yeah, for he was wiser than all other men, wiser than this guy and that guy and that guy and that guy. <laughs> and his fame was in all the, the surrounding nations. So he became famous by his knowledge. And he spoke 3,000 proverbs. He wrote 1,500 songs. He talked about trees, his son, beasts, birds, reptiles, fish, and and the, this thought that God is he came from all over the kind of here. Um, of course, science is a recent thing because it only became science when we had the scientific method. But um, he was a naturalist, a philosopher maybe a prophet as well, right? So, but, um, but, but, um, science is a way of trying people. Uh, this is what the evidence on this story kind of shows, that science is a way of drawing people in. Uh, people who may not believe in, the, in, this, in this Jewish God were though interested in find out, finding out about these topics, and that brought them in. And, and so, in in some sense, science is a tool that maybe the church is not using that. Um, so the the conference proceeded to talk about problem identification after this kind of initial stuff, and it, it wanted to talk about problem identification and kind of broke up the problem into three problem areas. One is the church's point of view, the problem, the science's point of view, and then uh, some some uh, directional point problems. So, from the church's point of view, the the problem is that um, they're critical of science because of how they read the Bible in certain ways. So, if they read the Bible, the Bible says Earth was created in seven days, and scientists say the Earth was created. In for four million years, um, then that's a problem, right? So, so this is one area. Um, there's concern over un, unchecked progress, and this is this is an area that I actually uh, research, and I do AI and robots. But, but recently, I've been studying the AIs of YouTube and Twitter, and how that can. Uh, uh, Polarize people's views. These these algorithms. So recently published a chapter on it, um, and so this is a legitimate concern. You know, uh, these are also, of course, uh, uh, and then concern over the the denigration of the faith. So I can tell you many times when I've been at a staff meeting in this room, and they're saying. Uh, why is the Presbyterian College over there? We should convert it into the computer science building and just, and just get rid of that because there's no use for it. Uh, or the student that I mentioned to you got very disappointed just finding out that that, that, that version. Um, 
So, 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 so there certainly, there certainly is a denigration of the faith among certain people. Not all of them. They're very nice people here, by the way. But uh, you know, and so now from 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 the sciences point of view, their their concern is that people are not really equipped to deal with understanding the the world around them because they're busy worrying worrying about heaven right now. There's a rapture, I'm gonna go away, all this kind of stuff, I don't have to worry about the earth. And so there's 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 this concern in the science about this. There's a concern in science uh, about um, the inf- how church people gather information, uh, specifically not understanding the scientific method, not finding any value in it, not even using the scientific method inside their own life because it's a valuable tool. Um, there's this kind of giving up of understanding. I don't understand quantum physics. I don't understand whatever. And there's this giving up of understanding amongst church people. Um, and then people are just happy to sort of live in two worlds. On Sunday, I am this, and then during work, I am I am that. And they kind of divide their 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 world. So this is kind of the criticism of the science scientific point of view. Before we look at this, any comments about this? How do you guys feel? Have you seen things that you'd like to share? Dear grad, I took a course in the history of astronomy, and our prof would criticize Christianity about probably every second lecture. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, like, what is it with what's the this guy got a cool software. And uh, so about two thirds of the way, way through the course, it came out. Well, so this guy's specialization was um, pre contact South American astronomy, like Aztec and Mayan and all that stuff. And, and when the Spanish and Portuguese came, their theology led them to destroy as much of the, of the documents in history there as possible. And so, because Christians had de- stupidly destroyed all this, his research material, he just had it for Christianity. <laughs> and just like every second lecture, had to say something. Yeah, well, we, we, we see that in, in, in lots of religious groups, even with um, uh, Muslims as they're going into uh, secular areas, they're destroying museums and things like that. So, it's a bit of that kind of thinking, the, the purity of thought and not wanting others. Yeah, so this, this idea of mine might sound a little strange, but I have noticed that, let's say, people who are very much concerned about the end times, and this is the last generation and Jesus is coming back, which might be, I don't know, um, then it, it's almost irrelevant. If we pursue science, we pursue technology. It's like if we are interested in the, you know, benefiting the next generation, or we're curious about something, because you know, what if it comes tomorrow? <laughs> so, so that tension I did feel. So, I mean, I don't know if anyone else here um, identified that. Um, and not that it's not good to think about that, you know, that fact, but then I don't know. Just making all of that irrelevant is. Well, it's great. You're already a sorry, you said that the earth is disposable. It was a Christian person. Yeah. But not, I mean, not my church, but yeah. I, I have to listen, and I'm a bit of a fan of Maya Lomas, mm-hmm. and just about every week they put on a podcast. And just this morning, I was listening to one, and it was uh, people from the evangelical uh, network. Actually, the speaker had you, uh, the, the evangelical uh, network of both environment. Mm-hmm. But anyway, in about the last five or ten minutes of the discussion this morning, was exactly on, on that point mm-hmm. about Christians. And uh, think the second coming is coming soon. So, all my theory about uh, the, the, the 
dealing with that in Korea. So, directional problem. Um, so, the idea that all truth is is from God. So this is a this is a difficulty because only the Bible has truth, right? Is that is that true? Um, and then this idea of not being curious. So um, when I was young, my mother would tell me, whenever you hear a pastor speak, whenever you hear a news news person speak, don't believe them. Check it for yourself. And so, and so the idea of curiosity, exploring, uh, seeing whether things are right or wrong, um, there, there doesn't, so, so one of the ideas, the, one of the problems which were, was identified, at least in the United States, is that there's this curiosity isn't there. There's this right and right and wrong. Um, there's also this thing where um, churches are not giving space um, to be uh, curious, and also um, um, scientists are not giving space for people to be critical of science. And so they automatically say, yeah, no, you are dumb. Right? It's, it's, it's a, it often, often, not often, but sometimes it comes out that way. Um, and so here, the, one of the problems was identified and also was that um, our, the, our theology is really being created out of these black and white boxes that we kind of set up instead of being uh, curious about what other people think and exploring that together. Um, I don't think they want to make a comment on this. Does your church encourage curiosity in science? The, the, the expressions are kind of like, not really. <laughs> so, why is this a challenge? Um, so, first of all, this is not about intelligence. Okay, and so, church people are not dumb. And, and it's not about integrity. Uh, scientists are not, a, are not a conspiracy to deceive people. Right? It's, it's not that. And it's unfortunate that in science, we often think of non-science people as being dumb. And it's unfortunate that in, in church, they, there's this view of, of a conspiracy or an intentional desire to deceive. That science, scientists are so biased that they're intentionally trying to deceive people. So it's, it's not about that. So, um, but, but it is about this. So it's about uh, epistemology, which basically means that uh, do I trust the Bible or do I trust nature? And that's kind of the way people explore it. Most people explore it. Right? So I rejected faith. I'm a scientist now. Or I reject science, I am now a person of faith, and they tend to make it into this binary choice. Um, and here I'm saying uh, there isn't a relationship between these two. Um, and another issue is that um, evangelicals, and maybe not all of us are evangelicals here, so. Um, so, but, but um, evangelicals uh, really uh, popularized the idea of independent thinking and piety and questioning authority. Um, and so it's normal for um, this group of people, and it's not me saying this, it's the, 
president of the Evangelical Association of the United States, who's saying this, right? So I'm just reporting on what they're saying. So he's saying about his own organization. So, so yeah. Uh, so, so because of this, it, it's difficult to accept authority from another place because, by definition, the Prussian authority they they escaped Europe to come to the because they're escaping that kind of stuff. Um, um, and the problem with science is, well, the, the idea is that science is uh, godless because science doesn't really define its knowledge. It just goes to nature and does experiments and gathers information. Um, and so this is, tends to be a problem um, for people of faith because the Bible is the you know, unerring word of God and it's the authority and um, nothing else is of equal. And so then in science it's a bit ambiguous because we just go to nature and we do experiments and we make conclusions and um, so this is this is kind of where the problem results and and it results into this kind of a culture war where we're thinking one way, Bible I interpret the world through the Bible, and I interpret the world through science, without any communication. Would you agree with this assessment? Would you view it differently? I have a question. It seems to me it's very much the case uh, in the USA, and my impression is it's a little bit less so in Canada. Yeah, I, I, I think I think there's uh, uh, I think there are churches that fit this description here in Canada as well. Yes, but maybe less so. Maybe. Yeah. I wonder if it's less so in the sense of evangelicals are a small percentage of the Canadian population, and less influential in the American population. But within Canadian evangelicalism, it would not be particularly difficult. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there's a possibility, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've come from evangelical and apostle churches, and I've moved around to different churches, and from the churches that I've been to, I, I resonate with a lot of my experience, as it resonates with a lot of this. Um, why I'm interested in this topic, it seems to resonate with me. Um, but that's just, that's, I'm just one uh, data point. Uh, so, so, you know, it just understands that, right? Yeah. I think that's similar to my experience um, for the different churches I've been in. I guess the church um, that I attended back home, it was more like very definitely in that culture war. And I guess how much you see this depends on how much they want to participate in that war. Versus, you know, focusing on being a church that spreads the gospel versus being countercultural. So it depends on like what their focus, what they want to be known for. Like the more there is, about, we should be against the culture without examining what's exactly in the culture that we're against versus the us and them uh, thinking. So as I go to different churches, there are just like different people are attending. We're not going to be focused so much on being against anything. We're just being for the gospel. And you, I guess I see that less as um, people are against, I wouldn't say against science, but like they're not as, uh, you don't see that war as much. They're, you see them being more accepting and more open. And even though they may not be in those spaces, they interact with people who are in those spaces. And there's less of a defense mechanism. And the other way around, it's not so much, um, oh, these are the, the ignorant Christians or like the less educated. They're just my brothers and sisters who are in a different field. Cool. Yes. I think there isn't really a war, except for a few topics, such as like the beginning of time, the Big Bang, and that's the major um, controversy between science and the Bible, the Big Bang, and I think the other one would be that which is on the case, um, but those are also like from their side, it's also theoretical, and from our side, I think science doesn't contradict the Bible. Unless for those two topics in mind, 
So solutions here on solutions. Uh, first one is um, reach out to your pastors and ask them to include testimonies from scientists. I'm a scientist. I'm a Christian. Uh, you know, that's not a contradiction. <laughs> you know those words. Uh, invite a professor to talk about their faith or their science. That would be good. Uh, sermon illustrations, talk about working out your faith uh, as, a, as a science person in front of people. Uh, there's the other things that they, uh, that they suggested was have uh, idle education, education classes in church, uh, or have an idea where if you want to talk about something controversial that your church maybe, you know, feels, you know, Detective of have these quiet, quiet conversations. So, uh, you know, friendship, uh, exploration, safe space, respect, leave space for uncertainty. Um, maybe it is seven years, maybe it's one day, maybe it's a thousand years, maybe it's four billion years. Right? So, leave, leave space for that. Right? Uh, you know, maybe he believes in seven days. Right? That's still like it. <laughs> right? And so, yeah, you know, that's, that, that's the safe, safe environment to sort of talk with or do in here, kind of have a safe environment. Um, uh, and, and encourage people to go to conferences. Like, this would be like a pastor, maybe encouraging people to go to conferences. Uh, find balanced sources. This is complicated. Um, but, um, which I might. I have another slide that kind of talks about this not good. Um, and, on it, and engage with people in, in a way that they are more susceptible. So one idea is that uh, the church is asked to be missional. So as a scientist, we should interact with the church in a missional way. Um, so maybe help STEM students at high schools, or um, you know, you can yeah, different things like that. And, and the, 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 the other thing here is to is to normalize the the conversation. Here I have two links. I think I'm not going to go to them, but uh, this is a link to the ASA that's the CSCA's statement. This is the ASA statement, the American version of the CSCA. And what I like about the statement is that it says, for example, um, so one of the CSCA's positions is that whether you believe in seven days of creation or whether you believe in four billion years of creation, you are welcome. Uh, you're welcome to critique whatever sign of view there is, and you're, you're welcome to present scientific findings. You're, you're, you're welcome. To do that, you, you, you aren't welcome to present things that are not scientific findings. You're not welcome to that, but you're welcome to prevent, pre pre present science, whether it's seven or whatever. Um, so I like this kind of normalization. It's a, it's a safe space. So as long as you have evidence of some kind presented, let's discuss. It's a safe space. And that's really great idea of, of normalizing things inside the church setting that the congregation can kind of feel. Well, or well, they need to go away. Um, so here's an example of, of missional uh, loving your neighbor as yourself. Example, climate change impacts the vulnerable first and most. But I don't believe in climate change. That's okay. Let's find vulnerable people and minister to them. And this kind of takes away the heat. Right? I accept your disbelief of it, but let's anyways agree on helping vulnerable people. Uh, if they have a flood and you don't believe it happened because of climate change, it doesn't matter. There's a flood, people need our help. Let's, let's go and minister to them. That's kind of the missional way to go about it. We also want to create safe spaces for young Christians so that they don't fall into the false choice of science 
This is X or faith. So X there you can have both at the same time. It's either of them too. Um, and uh, so being a missionary or a pastor is not the only way to be used by God. Okay. So I never expected that I'd be standing here in front of people talking about this. So this is an example of you know that you don't have to be a missionary. Um, or pastor, which which goes back to this. If I go just back up here, this woman over here, Jessica, she gave this testimony when she was in youth group, struggling with whether she should go on the mission field or whether she could, she should become a, a geologist. And so she went to her youth leader and said, "Share this with the youth leader," and the youth leader says, "Jessica." I am a geologist, <laughs> and, uh, and this, this was a very opening thing for her because in her church um, she felt compelled that if I'm going to serve God, I have to serve God in, 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 in the missionary field of some kind. What what was that word you said? That the pastor told her, and I knew it was not a word. What a minute! She she asked the pastor whether she should be. And then what did the pastor say? Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a geologist. I'm a geologist. Okay. Yeah. Her pastor. But it wasn't her pastor, it was a youth, a youth group leader. Yeah. A youth leader. So, of course, scientists do things wrong. I think we have got this already. So, uh, science, scientists also don't respect authority. Right? We, we don't respect authority. Right, so this is instead we wait for consensus and it takes time for that. Right? So I, I tell my students we fight by writing papers and submitting them and we let those things fight. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where the fight happens. Right. So um, so there's a confusion between expertise and an authority. Sometimes scientists take their expertise as authority. And that's that's Maybe a dangerous place to be. Um, sometimes, right? So, like, maybe the maybe the politicians have authority. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? Uh, hopefully, uh, I hope that makes sense. So, uh, we will grant bonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they have a lot of authority too, right? I'm not giving you money. <laughs> um, so, uh, we we often use our science to shut down conversation. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, and so, um, right, so be humble about our knowledge wins a lot of points. And I also, that's, that's besides scientists, that goes for theologians and pastors too, right? So, being humble about our knowledge and being accepting of other people um, is important. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so. well, but if somebody does have expertise, but I don't, yeah. or you can just do that. So, so how, how would you guys feel that? I'm just saying, like, if, I, if, I, if I'm, not, I'm not a scientist, I'm a Christian, and I don't believe in science, it becomes a problem, right? Because there's a scientist with expertise. So I, I collect stories of people in the scientific community who had their early theories rejected and that had later become mainstream theories. So for instance, one example is a guy named Joseph Schechtman in the 1980s, I think it was. He was at Cornell. Cornell? Cornell? No, Johns Hopkins. And he discovered something called quasi-crystals. And so these exist in theory, but the mainstream science said these cannot exist. And uh, what was his name? Linus Pauling, who won two Nobel Prizes, uh, one for science, one for peace, um, spent like 20 years trying to kill this guy's career. And he did. Uh, Johns Hopkins fired him. I mean, his, his career was right. <clears throat> 20, 25 years after, Jackman made these claims, became mainstream, and Nobel Prizes have since been awarded. 
but Holloway used as a two-time Nobel Prize winner used his authority to squash this guy's career, and, and there's other lots of other stories like that I've, I've discovered over the years in, in science. So, I, so I, I think it's I, I think if someone has expertise, you consult them. They say their expertise, and as an, as an expert, I make my my statement about computer science. And then I step back. It's up to you whether you want to test the or not. I can't force you. I shouldn't force you. I could force maybe, but I shouldn't. I, I can't really, but you know what I mean. So, uh, okay, so uh, good problems. Um, so, uh, this we talked about already. Um, one of the problems is that we have these, the conference called the Conflict Entrepreneurs. The conference did it, not me. Uh, they call it Conf Conflict uh, Entrepreneurs. This is people who, organizations that, in their desire to spread the truth, are actually spreading uh, anger between people. Because there's always fighting between these two sides. You're wrong, and you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. It's all this kind of so avoid the conflict entrepreneurs. And the, the question uh, that the evangelical president was saying is is this really uh, apologetics? Is it really science when you're trying to make these sides always fight? But then is it also something else? Right? Um, and so the idea was, we're all exhausted by this. We want to reconcile, um, and we need a way to find a model to have this safe dialogue between us. We don't have this. Um, and so I think I will end there. It's at thirty-eight o'clock. And, uh, so where can we go from here? Okay, so yeah, there is this thing. Um, uh, the Montreal CSCA is interested in starting a working group on this topic. No idea where it would go, um, but it would be great to have people interested in discussing this in a working group. It would be great if there are pastors and scientists and young people and old people and all kinds of people uh, on it. Um, uh, the Montreal CSA chapter is interested in making presentations and or seminars or studies and there's these two resources here um, these are two evangelical resources on science for the church and uh, you know the, the booklet on how to meet God through science um, I recently went actually to the Catholic website and they actually have really good material there too um, um, so, um, so, that, so, um, whatever your persuasion of Christian is, uh, there are res resources out there to, to look. I don't know about the Anglican, I'm sure they must have something too. But, um, um, yeah, so, if you're just a working group, talk to me. Um, so, this is now the last slide. So, Q&A. Uh, period. These are sort of my questions to you, uh, and then we can discuss them, um, or you can have your own uh, questions, or um, you can share. You've done a lot of sharing, right? So, uh, is this topic important to you? Um, how should we move forward? Is there hope? Um, can we serve the church as scientists? Yeah, COVID was a really relevant during COVID times. Mm -hmm. it's really yeah. yeah, I lost a lot of Facebook friends <laughs> over it. I had to zip my lips eventually and pick off. Not good sharing my views. <laughs> <laughs> To know all these questions were raised at the conference, somehow made me appreciate my church more. <laughs> I don't feel as he, 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 he
I was with a pastor. Um, we were in a, um, I think it was the Edmonton Science uh, building. We were dinosaurs there. The kids were running around. Because my kids really like dinosaurs. Like, because, do you believe that these are real? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he goes, I think they were put in the ground. And so this was an interesting conversation I was having. I wasn't sure how to handle the conversation, so I, I didn't handle it. I just let the conversation go, and I continued. Uh, I mean, I was with them the whole day, so, but I, so I just sort of, sort of arrived. This is an interesting. Yeah. Um, in my department, in here in the field, I'm in cancer research, so I'm more from a natural science point of view. But I have seen in my department and in my cancer institute that there are a lot of debates going on for good. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, a lot of debates going on. And there's a lot about, because we study cancer, so we talk about cancer and there are different models to how cancer initiates, what is the most important step to target, like many different things. And there are definitely disagreements among professors. But I really uh, liked how it was done in a really um, forgiving and very peaceful way. Uh, that even though everyone has different um, opinions, they can like they have their own reasons to back up whatever they said. Uh, at the end of the day, we are still like one body in the institute. And we still respect each other's uh, thoughts and where they come from. And I find it a bit different in churches. And I'm not sure how is that so, especially when we have one spirit, uh, we have one Jesus who unites us all, versus in my cancer institute, there's just the place and like our passion for science that unites us. So I'm, I was just thinking from, like, from this uh, um, time, uh, like what was missing that McGill has, or well, at least in my department, that has but a church who has Jesus and knows Jesus does not have. I think that's a really great question. Yeah. I don't know if this is like relevant, but I also noticed that I guess in some church spaces as well, it's not only science versus the church debates that are that can get heated and very personal, but other debates about theology and baptism, mm -hmm. um, how you take the communion. So it's like, because I know for some of my friends, like this one particular friend, we disagree about a lot of theological things, like baptism, um, like reform faith. We agree about some, we disagree about others, and in the end, we agree to disagree because like, we love each other, we're friends. And we can live with those differences, but in other spaces, like as Christians, we, we tend to be very divisive about that. And as Corey was saying, like, you know, we have the spirit of Jesus who calls us to unity. Why do these theological things, not to mention science versus faith, why do we get, you know, as Christians more this is a lens entitled to our opinions instead of agreeing to disagree? Which is why I think this discussion is very important, especially having compassion on both sides. And it's, it's, it's unfortunate, right? Because the Bible says they will know us by our love, right? And we don't, we just don't do that. Yeah. I mean, you can say something a little bit controversial. Um, in the Bible, wasn't the, the good Paul? And his people that had different ideas from him, he was pretty hard on them. Okay? And, and I was going to say the same about Jesus. Uh, Jesus was very hard on, at least on the Pharisees. 
and, 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 and so on. Now maybe he wasn't worried on the woman causing it over <laughs> and, and so on. But the point is, there's a sense in which in the New Testament, as you read it, there's, there, there is a conflict, and, uh, and, and sometimes pretty strong conflict in the Bible. Um, yeah, and then there's also when uh, the when the where is this where the disciples were saying let's stop these other people from working and Jesus mm-hmm. said no leave them alone yeah. 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 they aren't part of us but they're doing God's work for the people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean I think I think it's important I think truth is important mm-hmm. um, but. This is just me speaking, okay? But uh, I, I think truth is important, but I think it's difficult for humans to figure out what truth is. It takes us time, um, and it takes relationships, you know, uh, different points of views to see, um, you know. Of course, Jesus, Jesus was Jesus, right? So, you know, I, you know, I don't know. Right. I'm not Jesus. You guys are not Jesus. And so we, we, we come from a place where we have in, imperfect knowledge. And so I, th- I think I think the idea that um, this is just me again. Uh, I think the idea of uh, accepting the uh, uncertainty in our knowledge, the uh, probabilities of our knowledge, uh, is really important. Right. So uh, you know, uh, if I think I'm always my, my probabilities are always 100%. I don't know. Right? So I have to acknowledge that even if I'm 80% correct, I'm 20% not. And so I know that means something. Right? That means something in the illusion at the end, the 20% not. Um, so I think there's a humbleness that's missing. In, in all cases? Humility in all cases? <laughs> In most cases, I think. In most cases. <laughs> but going back to your climate change, mm. it only goes so far. Somebody says, here, it's disposable, I don't care. And at, at that point, you go and minister, and the person won't, won't come to you. But like, I, I think, I, I, personally, I would prefer that than to like uh, excommunicate. Yeah. Uh, this person, as much fun as that might be, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you just say, okay, but I'll go. Maybe you're right. I don't know. We'll see when the rapture happens, but right or something like that, right? right. We'll see when the end of the world happens. When, 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 you know, when, but, 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 but in either case, it doesn't really matter, right? So like, because I went to help people, not not going to be exempt. So, but I'm not a, a theologian, so. A couple more related thoughts that may or may not be related. So I have been part of secular departments that have been very intensely conflicted. So I'm happy you're in a great department. I, I have experienced the other in, uh, in university contexts. Um, and uh, I, I, we've probably made progress in that we don't burden each other anymore at the stake. Because at the, in the Reformation, I mean, you disagree. You, you burn the other person. That this, like, um, so uh, we improved a bit. Yes. We can improve more. Like one of the best things that I think in my own life is that I've attended lots of different denominations. Um, and there's wonderful people there. And also in all of them. Uh, some of them I may not agree with completely, but one book in all of those places. Uh, just to give like an example, I mean, I'm not a scientist, but just like looking at the questions, like how should we move forward? Uh, is there hope and stuff like that? Like I remember I went to my cousin's church and there was a woman there and she was a nurse. So I don't know if that's considered in the sciences, but... And she was against taking the vaccine, which I thought was interesting since, you know, she's working in hospitals and she sees, like, you know, firsthand uh, 
So I feel like in her case, she didn't speak of it much, but it could be like the issue is not the science per se, but just the freedom that she has to have this choice to take the vaccine or not, because she's not from Canada. So perhaps in her own country, she didn't have this kind of choice. So maybe like the, the struggles that people have with certain topics, like where they're coming from is not exactly with the science, but in other issues, like in her case, it's more like a, like a social freedom type of issue. So maybe like with certain cases and certain people, like we should be more mindful of like where they're coming from specifically. All right, so I will close it, I think. I think like that, that was the last slide. I think.